Now, John, I'll bring you into this conversation because I was golfing this morning, and I said hello to somebody, and his first question was, why didn't the Eagles draft a cornerback as if they have, like, this black cloud or black hole at the corner position? You know, a lot of pundits, these draft experts, kept pinning the Eagles in mock drafts of taking corners. And people were like, why do these national mock drafts keep having them at corner? Now, here's another guy saying, why didn't they take a corner? When you look at the defensive back area of the Eagles, is that an area of concern, or is it more just because last year they had so many guys injured that people are now wanting to stock up? Because I looked at the guy and said, dude, they've got like seven defensive back, seven corners, all of which are pretty viable. Yeah, real quick, I thought Jeff, when he said writing something, it was going to be the Mercy Matson story, I just assumed. Biography, actually, news. John. His biography. <laughs> it's going to be a real page turner if there's a second page. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I assume I was about to say, was that a national mock draft guy? Because everybody had the Eagles taking corners. Uh, well, you can never have enough corners in this league. It wouldn't have surprised me if they, they took one Later in the draft, it doesn't surprise me if any team does it because that's what the modern NFL is. Now, when the Eagles gave up two picks to move up uh, and get Andre Dillard, it became much more difficult. But when you're talking about that first-round pick, whether they moved up, moved down, moved around, no, I I don't think they were ever going to take a corner. Uh, And, and, you know, they're pretty deep at the position uh, after – Cravon LeBlanc and Rasul Douglas kind of, I don't, don't want to say proved themselves, but at least played up to a an NFL level to where you can look at them and say they're NFL players. Uh, so I, I never thought it was an immediate need as, as certain other positions were. And, and remember, even though you're not going to see much of them this spring, Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby are going to be back uh, so if you look around the league, the Eagles are deeper than most at corner. But you could always improve. Yeah, and Darby's back. Mills is back. We don't know what's going to go on with Sidney Jones, right? He's kind of the wild card. Um, and then after him, you've still got that group of guys, Russell Douglas, Curvon LeBlanc. I mean, they've Avante got – Avante Maddox. Maddox, another one. They've got a, They're going to have some pretty interesting competition, you would think, starting – I mean – uh, you know, in uh, in training camp, it, well, Darby's interesting because we'll see when he starts getting fired back up. Yeah, and remember, also you have the safeties, and and that's what Jim does. He sort of values safeties that have cornerback in their background, and and we've seen it a number of times. Malcolm Jenkins is, is sort of break glass in case of emergency. All over that back seven, he can play the slot. Uh, so there's a lot of versatile pieces, uh, and and I think that has to enter the equation as well. Uh, we saw it go in the opposite direction. A, a lot of people say Avante Maddox should get more snaps at safety uh, because he played so well when he was forced into it. Uh, it it's something you like, but Jim sees him as a nickel corner, and, and that's what the Eagles want him to be. Uh, but there's always moving parts, and uh, I think Jim Schwartz values versatility a little bit more, even more than most. One cool thing I do want to ask you on that, do you see any of these corners maybe getting shifted to the safety spot? And if so, will that start with any of these mini camps coming up? Will they say, hey, look, this is the year we want to see you try to get some reps at safety? Is there a candidate for that? No, I, I think certainly not in the off season, you see some of that stuff when injuries do pile up and, and sort of desperation comes into it. And that's how Avante got moved back. I think everybody, just because of his body type uh, and just because he kind of looks like a safety uh, and he's got the physical attributes of the safety. uh, People have always talked about Rasul Douglas and that. But the Eagles have never even sort of wavered. They see him as a corner. Uh, and he's a long, line, lengthy zone corner. Uh, but that's what they like him as. That's what they see him as. Uh, 
Uh, so, uh, no, I mean, they went out and got Andrew Sandejo for a reason. Uh, remember, uh, they have Trey Sullivan, who got forced into action uh, late last season, at least showed some things. And, and remember, they also picked up Godwin Igwebuike, trying to say that. Name. Hey, well Donald done. Son. You're better than me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's got corner in his background. So he's he's sort of that Jim Schwartz mold uh, of safety. So certainly in the offseason, they got plenty of bodies to play safety, even if Malcolm Jenkins doesn't come in uh, and, and stays away from voluntary work. Uh, they got plenty of bodies to run through. You're only going to talk about a Maddox moving back if, if injuries start to pile up again. You know, John, what's interesting, I always believed in the theory that, and I think it's it's tried and tested, that a coach's number one job is to put a player in the position to succeed. What happens after that, it's, sometimes it's a crapshoot, but as long as the guys are best equipped to succeed, then the coach can say he did his job. When we look at the corners, I feel that Avante Maddox's strongest suit would be as a slot corner. I know he played fairly well on the outside, but to me that's – where I feel like he projected and where he plays best. And Sidney Jones, we saw last year, is a is not a slot corner, where they tried to force feed him last year. So I guess I'd be surprised if everybody's healthy and if everything's equal, that if they come out of camp with Ronald Darby at one corner and Avante in the slot, where I think it should be, then it really should be between Jalen Mills and Sidney Jones for that other starting spot. And it'll be very interesting to me to see if both are healthy enough during preseason to really compete and may the best man win. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think if you look at it, barring injury, you can you can pretty much set Ronald Darby as one of the starters. And, and Avante Maddox, as I mentioned, is that nickel corner in the slot. Uh, you, can, you can pencil them in. And the outside, yeah, I think there's tremendous hope. And Joe Douglas and Howie Roseman talked about it pre-draft. Everybody was down on Sidney Jones. I, I think part of it is what you brought up. I, I don't think he was a nickel corner. I was talking about this last year. I think the Eagles should have put him outside, mm -hmm. left him there, but they wanted to get him on the field. Maybe that sort of had a, a little bit uh, of something to do with the regression. Uh, I, I want to see him on the outside, and I, I want to see him win that job. But I do think he has to win it. I don't think you could look at him and say, you're the, you're the top 15 talent. We're going to give you the job. I, I think he's got to earn it, mm -hmm. and I think he will have to earn it because Jim Schwartz likes Jalen Mills, and he likes Jalen Mills more than most people. Uh, so, But I do think that's how it's going to shake out. Uh, I, I think they want Sidney Jones to push uh, uh, Jalen Mills and, and to a lesser extent, Rasul Douglas, I know there's some Rasul people out there. I, I don't think he's going to push Ronald Darby, but uh, they value that depth. And the same in the in, in the slot, by the way, with Cravon LeBlanc. He's the backup slot corner. Uh, and, and overall, again, when you when you sort of rate that against the rest of the league, it's pretty pretty big a pretty good group. Mm -hmm. Not any great corners, but a lot of depth. And it's a pretty solid unit. One one thing I think we should like as reporters about this training camp, and OC, I'll even go OTAs, compared to some of the past, and maybe it's not great for the team, but it is better for us, is that there's a lot of competition. That's some important spots this year. Normally teams like to have that 95% of it wrapped up, and and then, you know, they, they talk about best, you know, the, the depth chart being written sand, but we know it's not true. But this year, whether it's running back, whether it's slot corner, whether it's outside corner, I think even Sandejo will get tested a little bit by maybe a Countess or somebody else for third safety. Um, I just think in, in general, there's more a backup offensive lineman, left guard if there's an injury. There's, there's some legit competition that we'll see at camp in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and that's a bad job by me. I forgot to bring up Lake Countess, and there's a guy who was drafted by the Eagles, uh, off waivers, and that's another guy who's got corner safety versatility. He was a corner in college. Now he's regarded as a safety in the special team. So uh, that's somebody else in the mix as well, and you're right. There's tremendous depth. And you mentioned, you mentioned Howie Roseman uh, talking today in a Philadelphia area radio station. That name keeps coming up. I talk about it all the time. Joe Osmond. Oh, yeah. 
this, this, this coaching staff, this group, and Howie and Joe Douglas, they love Joe Osmond. Nobody knows who he is. He was sort of the Stephen Means of the, the practice squad last year and the scout team. Uh, and he helped the offensive line, and he played all the best defensive linemen uh, and gave them the looks during practice. But they think he can contribute. And when we talk about that rotational end, I know today's May 7th, today's compensatory pick day in Philadelphia, and everybody wants Ziggy Ansa. Well, Ziggy is not coming here. And part of the reason why is Joe Osmond. This, this organization loves Joe Osmond. I'm a little scared and about how much they love him, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, but, but think about it, Jeff. I'm not comparing him as players. That was a joke. Well, I know, I know. Ziggy, Ziggy Ansa is, is a top-tier edge rusher in this league when he's healthy. He wants to be a starter. He's going to be a starter. He's not going to be happy with 30 to 40% of the snaps. It, it takes a unique player. I always compare it to utility men in baseball. You can say somebody's a better hitter, better this, better that, but can they accept a utility role? Well, Joe's going to accept that role. Uh, and somebody like Ziggy Yance is not going to accept that role. So that plays into it as well. John, while we're on this topic, is there any other names that you can predict and look into your crystal ball that we're going to be saying a lot this season that the average fan doesn't have an eye on or isn't really aware of? Well, uh, hopefully I not mean, that safety whose name we all can't pronounce. Yeah, Godwin. Yeah, <laughs> no, I meant Godwin yeah. equal Guabugi. <laughs> Nailed no, it. That was it. <laughs> well, and, and I think, you know, Jeff brought up Blake Callis. I, I think, you know, he's going to make this team. I already got him penciled in. He's going to be on this team as sort of a hybrid defensive back, special teams player, might even be the kick returner, even though uh, that's not that important anymore, uh, the way the league has shifted and, and taken kickoffs out of the game. Uh, but he's a versatile guy. They just brought back former six-round pick. They obviously didn't want to lose him. Uh, and, and how he has been, I, I mean, you just see this offseason. Uh, and with Deshaun Jackson and Vinnie Curry coming back. I, I mean, this team has some love for uh, players that have been drafted uh, with this organization, and, and Blake's one of them. So that'd be another guy I would throw into that, that equation. Uh, and then, you know, I go all the way back. There's probably too many bodies at wide receiver, uh, now that the Eagles have brought in J.J. Arcega whiteside But I, I just talked about Joe Osman getting brought up uh, without people asking questions about him. That's what Doug Peterson did about with Braxton Miller. So I think that could be part of it. Mm. By the way, uh, part of that conversation with Howie Roseman, he mentioned in there that he would not hesitate to extend Carson Wentz right now. And it seems that there's, you know, two sides of the fence on what the Eagles should do in this situation. But he went on to kind of suggest, look, this guy is going to be, I mean, he made it sound like, <laughs> I don't know what people are seeing, but this guy's going to be like an MVP candidate, multiple, you know, like constantly in that conversation. And, you know, so it obviously, which you would think that they have no hesitation about this guy being their quarterback. No, nor should they. I, I mean, the hesitation, if there's any, uh, and it's legitimate, is is the health part of it, uh, because we all know the resume from that aspect. But I, I mean, that's sort of the NFL now. Uh, they went as long as they could with the best backup quarterback in football. Uh, it wasn't financially feasible anymore. Uh, so the safety net is gone. You hope Nate Sudfeld develops. You hope he can be a capable backup, but hey, it's Carson Wentz or bust. So, I, yeah, obviously he's their quarterback. He's their guy. He's been their guy. Even when Nick was winning playoff games and Super Bowls, they never wavered from Carson Wentz, not once. Uh, fan, part of the fan base did, a small minority, but certainly nobody in that building, uh, nobody in this organization uh, ever thought Carson Wentz wasn't going to be uh, the face of the franchise, and, and that continues. It's just a matter of when the extension gets done. And I think what Howie said today was sort of code. If it's team-friendly, it'll get done tomorrow. If it's not as team-friendly, it's probably not going to get done until next year. 
Hey, John, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. No. Going right? uh, nope. I, I'm curious. I've been thinking about this a lot um, because it seems like all of the moves that have made this, this offseason – have generally from fans gotten applause. You know, we talk about Howie season and everything like that. There hasn't been a ton of criticism. So I'm wondering what you think will be the biggest Howie backlash in October or November if the Eagles lose a game or two or it's getting a little tight that you're not hearing right now. Uh, I think defensive line, and maybe you hear some of the, a, a little bit of whispers, I wouldn't say significant, but if they struggle to get to the pass rusher, and particularly Derek Barnett, if he doesn't step forward uh, and, and Vinny as a rotational guy doesn't offer the kind of pass rush on a consistent basis, then I think people start talking about Michael Bennett, especially if he's having a good season uh, with the Patriots, start talking about Chris Long, if he's enjoying Game of Thrones and retirement. <laughs> Uh, that I think is is will be the one question, and and then just the plan in general. Which when you were on last week, we kind of talked about. I mean, they believe that the NASCAR package should have Malik Jackson on the field. Mm-hmm. I I don't necessarily agree with that, uh, and I think that's something you sort of circle and and see how is it going to work out. John, I saw Chris Long answering a lot of tweets to fans. This might have been a week ago, if not two, but just bringing his name up made me think of it. He answered one of the fans' questions saying, uh, would you come back in the middle of the season if the Eagles reached out to you? And he said, same thing as I've been saying. If the role stays the same, I will come back off the couch. I thought that was interesting to me. Do you think there's any chance he's answering random dudes' questions. Dude, he's great on Twitter, man. He's a legend. (laughs) That just means he has too yeah. much time. Yeah. <laughs> Him and Aton should be he, hanging he, out yeah, together. He enjoys. Get, yeah. Keep he them enjoys off social media. media. <laughs> Sometimes you you love and you hate it, um, but once you start engaging. But, yeah, I yeah. mean, if the role is there, yeah, Chris will take it. And, and he's been really consistent about that. And I think that's where some of his frustration uh, comes from because, you know, people talk about like he's acting like – he wants a bigger role or he wants more money. The money part of it's silly. I mean, the guy has been giving away money. Uh, and, and, and the role part of it, he's been very, very consistent. And he had some issues last year when they acquired Michael Bennett. He was questioning whether the role would be there for him. So this has been going on for over a year. It's just this time the Eagles told him, no, the role is not going to be uh, there for you. Uh, and, and that's when he shifted gears and told him to uh, prepare like he's not going to be back. Uh, injuries crop up, and if the role arises, yeah, then I think Chris would love to play. I feel like there's a lack of perspective a little bit here, on Chris, and not to come down on Chris Long, but he's every year it's a year older. The team is yeah. aging. I, I, I can't well, understand I why he couldn't be happy with playing. They made the decision. What's to say that again? I think that's part of the reason they made the decision. Certainly. He is 34 years old. And it is sort of that Patriots mentality of better to give up on a player a year early than a year late. I think that's a big part of it. Uh, the quite, I, I saw no in, – in fact, when, he, when Derek Barnett went down and he got more reps – uh, his play improved. I, I think the the situational role has extended his career. If this is a guy who was playing 80, 90 percent of the snaps, was a full time starter, was out there for three downs, I don't think he'd be all that effective in, in that targeted third down role where he's just rushing from the edge. He's been pretty darn effective, and I think if you keep him in that role. I, I don't see why there would be a significant downgrade this season. There was no evidence of it last season. John, uh, also in that conversation, one thing that Howie Rosen brought up, and I, I find this interesting because I've seen Deshaun the last couple of Sixers games, and he mentioned that Deshaun's more mature and that all of us need some time to mature. He's got a family. He's got two kids. He's been here every day in the off season which obviously is a positive to hear all those things. But, you know, 
you look at Deshaun Jackson, the one that they had before, we all know that Howie, you know, he was kind of one of Howie's guys, right? I mean, Howie didn't want Deshaun yeah. to go the first time. So obviously he's going to stick up from here. But my question really is, how much do you think they plan for him to be a part of the offense? Like, do you think he is a guy who's going to be more of a decoy you know, or stretch the field kind of guy? Or do you think that they plan on getting him 60, 70 cat? Because he never was that kind of guy. No, I, I, and I don't think, and, and we talked about questions before, maybe that's another one you should circle. Because I, I don't think it's about Deshaun's uh, maturity level. I think he has matured uh, as a person. And by the way, maybe you should get him to talk to Joel. Uh, a little bit, but but not the Sean's the guy. Well, <laughs> he's I, the, guy. the guy. What a world to live in. <laughs> no, it's a guy who was immature at one point and yeah. matured. So, I, I who knows? Maybe it's helpful. But uh, when you talk about the Eagles' offense, you know Doug always says it starts with seventeen and eighty six, and that's all Sean and Zach. That's not changing. Uh, if anything, you, you've gotten better from a running back standpoint. Jordan Howard's got to get his touches. You, you hope to get Miles Sanders involved. Uh, you still have Nelson Aguilar in the slot. Uh, from a passing perspective, at best, we haven't brought up Dallas Goddard. At best, he's the third option. And at times, you could argue four uh, because of Nelson playing in the slot. Is, is he going to be accepting of that role? Because I, I, I don't think – a long-winded way of saying I don't think he's getting a ton of traffic there's only one football so I I do think he is a deep threat and that's going to be his role and something this team has been lacking really since he left the first time around John McMullen football at four all guests appear via the boardwalk Honda hotline follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen and of course we'll do it again tomorrow Johnny Mac in the house appreciate it pal all right thanks guys